Hi everyone, Rich Sheffern here from Steel Our Winners, and today we have a really special guest, John Lee Dumas, who's Entrepreneurs on Fire podcast is really one of the top podcasts out there. And so this is a real treat for someone who's actually in it, doing it daily, and actually is also then teaching what he does. So it's a uh, someone who has excelled themselves with a podcast that is very widely distributed and then also teaches others how to do the same. So really excited to have you on here, uh, John, and really kind of tap into your mind and understand uh, some of the things that you do behind the scenes that makes you as successful as you are. Well, Rich, I'm fired to be here virtually and pretty soon hanging out with you in person in Del Rey. So uh, we're going to have yes. a blast, buddy. It'll be fun. So let's talk about marketing and let's talk about a winning strategy that you have uh, that you'd like to share. Okay. So it's 2020. You know, if you're watching yeah. this at some point in the future, like it's 2021 or beyond, <laughs> whatever it might be, it's not the past. Okay. It's not 2012, 2015, 2017. And why I want to bring that up at the beginning is because there's been a lot over the years of people creating what I call, you know, lower value lead magnets. You know, listen, I still use them and they're great. And what do I mean by those? Like PDFs or, you know, a quiz or a quick little three page ebook. All those things have their place, but they also are very saturated. People are used to seeing them. They kind of, their eyes glaze over now. They're not like this new, unique, highly perceived value lead magnet. So they don't, have people take the kind of action that they would have, again, 10, eight, six years ago. So what have I found over the past couple of years and definitely here in 2020, it's working super well, is having a really highly perceived value lead magnet. And what I've found is super highly perceived is a free course. Now, a lot of people kind of shy away from a free course because they're just like, well, if I do a free course, aren't I kind of like giving away you know, the bacon before I even like feed the pig. Like I just came up with that random analogy, but I mean, it kind of makes sense. And the answer is you will, if you do it wrong and you absolutely won't, if you do it right. Now, what is doing it right look like? Well, let me break this down. My main traffic generator that I call it, my MTG is a podcast, but you know, as Rich and I want to be very clear to everybody watching, like you may or may not have a podcast. You may or may not have a vlog or an email list or a just an overall WordPress website or Facebook ads, like whatever it is that you have, insert that thing here. What is your main traffic generator? What is the main way that you generate leads to your business? So for this example, it's my podcast. So on Entrepreneurs on Fire, I'll drop a great episode with Rich. We did a great episode last week. It's actually going live in mid-February, so definitely check it out because he dropped value bomb after value bomb. And then at the end of the episode, what do I do? I give a call to action to one of my lead magnets. I say, hey, you've been listening to Rich and myself, Fire Nation, for the past 35 minutes. Maybe, just maybe, some of you have been saying to yourself, you know, I'd love to podcast on ballet or fitness or music or whatever it is that your passion or hobby or skill or expertise, whatever it is. So if you want to take that next step and create and launch your own podcast, guess what? I'm not going to sell you a course. I have a completely free course for you called freepodcastcourse.com. Go visit that URL right now. And for free, you will be able to learn how to create and launch your podcast from myself, John Lee Dumas, who's been doing this since 2012, over 2,400 episodes published mm -hmm. to date. And I'm going to teach you step-by-step -step video tutorials how to do it. People are like, whoa, mm -hmm. like I've been thinking about doing a podcast or and this is great too, Rich. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm not actually, it's not really my thing, but I know like three or four people that I'm talking about it. And they're going to share that URL, freepodcastcourse.com with their friends. And they're all going to take this course because they go to that URL. What's the first thing it says? Email capture. It says, hey, enter your email in to unlock the course below. So it is free. I'm capturing the email. So there I am already building some legit lead generation on that. Boom, the course opens below. And then they go through and what do they do? They learn how to create and launch their podcast. People are like, but John, you're teaching people how to create and launch their podcast. Like, how do you actually sell them Podcasters Paradise, which for people that don't know, is my premium podcasting community that I've been running since 2013. That's generated over $7 million in revenue from course sales alone. How do you get people into that high end premium course? Well, the answer is guess what? When people launch their podcast, what's the next thing they do? wow, John, like my podcast is live. I'm so excited. But now how do I grow my audience, John? How do I get more listeners? 
John, how do I monetize my podcast? How do I get sponsorships and affiliate deals? And you know, how do I actually sell for my podcast? I go, great questions. All those and more are answered in my podcasting community, Podcasters Paradise. So here you go is the next logical step in the Podcasters Paradise. Now what, and this is important, Rich, are these people at the situation for me right now, they know, like, and trust me. They just went sure. through many hours of video training with me. And I just delivered them exactly what I promised, the creation and then the launch of their podcast. So are they going to go and try to find you know, a course that's a couple hundred bucks cheaper from somebody they don't even know, like, or trust, who don't even know if that person's going to deliver mm -hmm. on the value that they're promising? So that, that process to me has been an absolute game changer for all the reasons I talked about. It, it causes people to take action from my call to action on the podcast because they're saying this is a highly perceived value. Like if I did something like, hey, the top five mistakes that podcasters make on every episode, they'll be like, well, I'm not, I don't even have a podcast yet, so that's not super relevant to me right now. So I go for the biggest initial net. I offer them that free course. And that, that free course delivers the promised result. And then it's an, and I have their email address, by the way. So they're entered into a nurture email campaign, which is something that you're great at, Rich, of getting people through up into Podcasters Paradise. And I have all the different ways to, to sell Podcasters Paradise, including, hey, jump on a call with my sales team if you have any questions. Like, we'll do this all the way because this is, you know, a high premium court, uh, pro, uh, community um, product. So that's just kind of like my way of saying that. If you really want to get the highest number of people to join your lead generation list, actually become part of your community, to start learning from you on the actual thing that they want to learn, a free course is an amazing way to do it. Nothing converts across any of my channels, across any of my lead magnets to nearly the level of that free course. And if you structure it right, like I mentioned, where you're just getting people halfway or three quarters of the way to what they're gonna end up seeing as a finish line, which of course for podcasters is getting a bigger audience, making more money with the podcast, then you're, you're just getting them halfway or three quarters of the way there. Your course, your paid premium content will get them across that finish line. I got it. And so there's a bunch of things going on in there. So I just wanna kinda of, uh, help people break it down a little bit just in case. So um, yeah, there's a lot of marketing concepts embedded in that strategy. Um, so first and foremost is perceived value, that everything has a perceived value, right? And I remember very clearly, I was in a store in Australia. There was a small little book called The Pyramid Principle, um, uh, written by Barbara Minto, and it was a hundred bucks. And it was a little like hardcover book, and I couldn't believe it was a hundred bucks. But, <laughs> and uh, I was like debating whether I should buy it or not. And then I, it occurred to me that I pay $500 sometimes for PDFs. So why wouldn't I? But it was that it was packaged that way. And I didn't think a book like that size should be that price. And I buy a uh, Harvard Business Review and it's so much more expensive than every other magazine, but it's cheaper than a book. But I look at it like a magazine because it's packaged like a magazine. And I always have resistance to buying it, even though I buy it every month. And when I first got online, the, everybody had e-courses. That's what they were called, e-courses, which were just really like a series of emails. And when I came out with the manifesto, it looked different. It looked like it was more like a product at that time. And that might be one of the reasons why it did so well. Um, and certainly, um, we do a lot at Agora where we try and uh, come up with metaphors or uh, ways of describing things that are not the way that is commonly described so that we we uh, we avoid categorical dismissal um like i know what that is i don't need that um and so it's interesting that um you know by putting a course together you're giving a bunch of value that maybe you know people are not like, wow, that's a lot. Um, so there's one there. Then you're giving them like what Kern talks about results in advance. You're getting them closer to the goal, but they now need your product more than they did before. I would assume it's not like a difficult course to get through. You know, it's meant to be consumed in less than two hours. And that's the main goal is you want people to start the course, to finish the course, and then to be hungry for more. So if you can accomplish those things, you're golden. So exactly. It is not a huge course to consume. Yeah. I've seen some people make mistakes where they give away free stuff and then that free stuff is actually a burden and then makes it less likely that the person will ever finish that free stuff. And then 
much less likely to buy. Yeah, and a real and quick I, example about that specifically that speaks so clearly to that is for the longest time, I would always ask my audience, which I still do, which I highly recommend everybody doing is always be asking people who are following you, who are consuming your content, what is your biggest struggle? And then just let them answer all of their struggles or pain points or obstacles or challenges. And one of those things that just kept coming up over and over again was, John, I just want to start, but I don't even have an idea to start. Like I don't even have that first smither of an idea. Like you talk in your podcast about yeah. the aha moments and this and that. I've never had one of those. And I go, okay, listen, and this is me talking to myself. Let me create the solution to this biggest struggle. So I created this fairly intricate free course because I was following that other model that I just shared with you, the free podcast course, the podcast paradise. So I said, that's been working so well for like seven years now. Why don't I actually take this and go into um, a very similar model where I'll have a course called your big idea. And it's going to be a free course where I'll get people to their big idea. But then what happens when people have their big idea? Now they're like, I'm so excited. I have my big idea. I've had my aha moment, but how would I make money doing this thing? Mm -hmm. Of course, that's the, next, that's the next problem because what did I do? When people finish my course, right. I would ask them, well, what's your biggest struggle now? Well, how do I make money doing this thing? So I created my paid premium course to go off of that called Real Revenue, how to take your big idea and make serious bank. My mistake, Rich, to your very point, was this Your Big Idea course right. was pretty extensive because I really put yeah. a lot of time, energy, and effort into it because I just wanted to deliver for these people. And I thought it was going to take that much to get them to it. And I was just watching, you know, first off, like the people, you know, I, I was going through my um, analytics of people who would actually consume, you know, how many, you know, episode one, two, three, four, and be like 99%, 84, <laughs> 70, 20. And then by the end, I was yeah. just like, 3% of people are getting to my final video. I'm like, well, no wonder why nobody's buying real revenue because they're not even being pitched real revenue because um, it's just, they're, they're not getting to that point yet. So I took- and You're actually three, confirming for them that they won't go through the whole course too. I've confirmed that for them, exactly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I took 80% of that Your Big Idea course and I pushed it over into the real revenue course. So when they did buy, it was still there for them. And I just gave these people the first three steps. And, I, and now my new uh, call to action was, listen, in under 60 minutes, I will get you to your big idea. And now people just like, we're like, well, I can do, I can do an hour right now, or I can do an right. hour this weekend. And the um, percentage of people consuming the content went through the roof. And that, therefore, the percentage of people that saw the offer went through the roof. And so then, of course, conversions for the offer went through the roof. So great example of exactly what you were talking about, that you can't make it overwhelming or a burden on their already burdensome life. Because believe me, everybody thinks their life is full of burdens. And whether they're right or they're wrong, that's right. the reality. So it's coming up with like some kind of premium of some sort, right? That at the end of the day, what do you call it? Yeah, massive traffic. My, your main, main traffic generator. So the, the, main, main, generator. the right. main way that you're generating traffic. And from there, then you're advertising something that has higher perceived value than what the marketplace is currently being offered, we could say, that, uh, that gives a, an, a, a very much abridged um, uh, version of whatever to get them that outcome that makes them a better customer for you. Abridged, I mean, but yeah. also gives them you yeah. know, a significant valuable, valuable win that makes them like, okay, you know, it's kind of like one of those yeah. things like the, the French have a saying of, you know, eating makes you hungry. And like a lot of people be like, oh, I'm not that hungry. And then like you take like a bite of pizza, then you're just like, oh, I'm starving. Yeah. Just like you want to whet people's appetite enough by them consuming your content that actually makes them starving, even if they weren't at the beginning. Yeah. You want to leave them wanting more for sure. Um, so great. And so if you know in the work that you do when you're working with like a let's say uh you know an online entrepreneur or someone just starting out like how long do you think it would take them to to put something not like the size of your podcast and not the size of your course but um say someone's got an online business going right now like what do you think is the what's the if they have any online business they must be getting some traffic so i guess yeah. like step two would be actually first do the create this like um high perceived value premium and then okay. go back. Yeah. Let me try to sound, sound too harsh here because okay. just to give maybe some of your audience a background, if they don't know this about me, but 
I was an officer in the US Army for eight years. I spent 13 months in Iraq. Like when it comes down to it, like I don't really take BS from people. Like I won't, won't take it. Like I won't, I won't let them give it to themselves. So mm -hmm. people were just like, well, John, like I need to wait until I get this or when I get that or this or that. And it's like, stop whining because that's what mm -hmm. you're doing and take this weekend and do what I'm about to tell you to do. And so what is that thing? I tell them to do. Right. I say, well, listen, what is the actual ideal customer that you're looking to serve? Like, like describe that person in two to 300 words. Sit down, write on a piece of paper who that individual is. You can call it your avatar, your ideal client, your ideal, whatever it might be, whatever right. you want to call it. Write down that person so you understand, you know, at a decently high level who that individual is. Then ask yourself, okay, now this person's here in front of me. Where would this person be hanging out online in groups? Because guess what? There are millions, and I mean millions, of free, thriving, active Facebook groups on every topic that you can imagine. So let's just say, Rich, and this is just pulling an example out of the clouds, right. that the person I'm talking about loves ballet so she sits down and she just writes 300 words of like who her ideal client is um for you know whatever it is that she's going to create and she has that down she's like okay well the ideal client is you know somebody who's you know the age of between 7 to 11 that's really looking to become you know get into ballet whatever it is so then what is she going to do she's going to go into facebook she's going to literally search like ballet um groups for um, teenagers or for, you know, young, young girls. And guess what? There's going to be all these Facebook groups that come up where people are like trading, you know, nutrition secrets. And they're talking about, you know, the best clothing to wear and the best moves and the best teachers and the best this and the best that. And then what are you going to do over that weekend? You're just going to be a person of value. You're going to answer people's questions. You're going to um, ask questions of your own. You're going to be curious. Um, you're going to give advice. You're going to take advice. You know, you're going to give support. You're going to give guidance. All of these things. Just be this really active individual in this group, learning. Like, what are these people complaining about? Like, what are they wishing existed that didn't? And like, for people that are active in there, you're going to directly message them on Facebook or even in that little you know group chat right there, and just ask them, hey, what is actually what? What are you actually struggling with? And if you're really bold, and I think you should be, you should message the moderator of that group mm -hmm. and say, hey, can I just? I have a I'm writing an article, you know, about ballet and blah, blah, blah. Can I just create this poll? I'm just going to say, what is your one biggest struggle right now? And just see what people respond in that poll. Like you have to be bold here. Get out there. You're going to get so much information. And then what are you going to have as a result of that work over the weekend? You're going to have a bunch of answers of people's biggest struggles, biggest obstacles, biggest challenges, categorize them in a Google document. There's going to be a lot of similar ones. So block them together and then scan them over and say, which is the first solution I want to create? What's that first solution? And then once you have that first solution, you sit down, create the solution. Or if you're just like, have time to create that, that, that quick course over the weekend, which again, I would call you out on because it's just mm. flipping on Zoom like we're doing right now and just talking about what it is that you already know. Um, go ahead and just create the, the landing page that says, hey, a free course on blah, you know, on the best ballet moves. And then just start sending it out to people that you're connecting with in that Facebook group and forum or all these other places that you're connecting with them and just see how many people sign up for it. It doesn't even have to be ready yet. You can just, they send their email that it says, coming soon, coming soon, coming soon. You'll be alerted as soon as it's ready. And now you're going to actually prove the concept that people really want that. Because not to get, go too far down a rabbit right. hole here, but back in 2013, Rich, when I was about to launch Podcasters Paradise, I knew it was going to be so much work. Oh, hundreds of tutorials mm -hmm. and templates and, gui and guides and guidance and microphone recommendations. Just It was a whole, whole mass of information. So I said, before I even create any of that, I'm just going to go to my audience right now and say, who wants Podcasters Paradise? This is what it's going to be. Tutorial, video tutorials, a Facebook group, access to me, templates, microphone recommendations. Okay. If you want this, vote with your wallet. You have to pay me $250 today to secure your spot. In 45 days, I'm going to open the doors of Podcasters Paradise, and it's going to be $500 then. But now mm -hmm. if you do it, lock in the early bird special. Help me help me build this for the next 45 days, meaning I'll be asking you questions mm -hmm. about what you want. Is this good? Is that good? So you can be part of the actual creation of paradise. And we had 50 people lock in at 250 bucks. And, and that proved the fact that there was really an audience that wanted this. They were willing to wait 45 days before it was even available. You can do the exact same thing. You can do it this weekend by doing exactly what I just shared. 
writing down who's your ideal client, finding them online in Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups and Quora, which is like Q and A sites. So they're mm -hmm. everywhere. Find their struggles, create your solution for them, and then offer it to them. And again, that offer is the promise of it being created if enough people raise their hand and say, yes, I do need this. Awesome. And I totally agree. And we are on the same page. And yeah, so people need to think about uh, everything you said. And if they don't have that, they should spend this weekend on it. And they should think of something that they can deliver to clients and prospects that has a high perceived value that gives them results in advance and moves them one step closer to doing business with you. And one of the things that I've always done in all the free reports I wrote and stuff like that was uh, it was more important for me that someone felt like they got value from the report than whether they bought or not, because then it made sure that they'd read the next report. And I had the same experience, like when I, you know, I'd write reports for my clients and then free reports for the market. And the two were very different. The ones for the public were, there were no exercises. There was nothing in there that I would think would slow people down. I just wanted people to understand something versus my clients. I wanted them to be able to do something. Um, so, you know, I always kind of parsed it that way, but really valuable advice, John. And I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to. Did I earn a cigar in Delray? Just be honest with you. You did. You did. You get yes. up a drum. <laughs> oh, big time. Very cool. And you'll be uh, flying from Puerto Rico. Is that correct? Yeah, I love it. I'll be actually taking a direct flight to Fort Lauderdale, jumping in like a 30 minute Uber up to Delray and life is good, man. Very cool. Well, we, I will see you soon. And thanks for taking the time once again. And uh, see you in some future newsletter uh, sometime in the future. Sounds good, brother. Take care. All right. Adios.